قَالُوا The leaders will say, بَلْ رَاذَرْ لَمْ تَكُونُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ Don't blame us. لَمْ not تَكُونُوا You were, you yourselves were not mu'mineen, believers. You weren't believers yourselves because had you truly believed, you wouldn't be affected by our oaths or by our false promises or by our pressuring you or by our bullying you or by our stopping you. You wouldn't be affected by it. And is that true? Is that true? Don't we see examples of people who were pressurized, who were bullied, who were physically abused and they did not give up? They remained firm? Don't we see the example of Musab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu for instance? Just the other day I was reading the story of Musab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu with my son and it was amazing. I mean, amazing sahabi. Look at how he was raised. What kind of a young boy he was. So much wealth and love and respect and everybody you know, knew that he was going to become a leader, a great man of the Quraysh. And what happened? He becomes a Muslim. And as he becomes a Muslim, the mother says, finished. I don't know you. You don't know me. You're not getting a penny. You're not getting anything. Musab ibn Umayr Abdullah Anhu had to leave Mecca and hide in Habasha. And then what happened? He returned to Mecca when the false rumors spread that the Quraysh had embraced Islam. So he returned to Mecca. And again, same story started. He goes to Medina, one of the first people to immigrate, a teacher of the Qur'an, and what happened? Soon in the battle of Uhud, he passed away. And when he passed away, how was he? What kind of clothes did he have? So short, that when they were covering his body, if they covered his face, his feet would be uncovered. If they covered his feet, his face would be uncovered. So they had to cover the face and put some grass on the feet. The Sahaba would be embarrassed to see him because his state had changed so drastically. You're talking about a person who was raised in luxury, in so much wealth, and now all of a sudden, in complete poverty. Complete poverty. Someone who was loved by his family and now all alone, abandoned by his family. It was embarrassing for the Sahaba even to look at Musab ibn Ramayr anhu in the face because it would make them sad. So there's so many examples of people who were pressurized by their very families, but did they give up? No, they didn't. Who were pressurized by their community, by their leaders, by their elders in different ways, but did they give up? No, they didn't. So on the day of judgment, turning against each other and saying, oh, you misled us is not going to work. Because the leaders will themselves say, بَلْ لَمْ تَكُونُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ Don't blame us, you yourselves were not believers. And, وَمَا and not كَانَ لَنَا It was for us, عَلَيْكُمْ Against you, over you, مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ Any authority. We never had any power over you. If only we could understand this right now. People don't have power over us. They don't have any authority over us. You know how and why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the heart hidden. Faith, iman, how is it? It's intangible. It doesn't have a physical form in the sense that iman, faith is not like a thing, an object that you carry with you, that you wear on you. You can keep it in your heart. You can hide it from people easily. Isn't it? So people can try to steal you know, take away, snatch away from you, bully you into giving up what you have, but if you wish to keep your faith in your heart, they can never take it away from you. They don't have that control, they don't have that authority. They don't. وَمَا كَانَ لَنَا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ They will say, we never had authority over you. But it's amazing how much we fear people. We think they do have authority over us. They don't. Think about it. There were so many companions who were literally at the verge of death, at the verge of being killed, at the verge of being assassinated. But did they give up their faith? No, they didn't. Could the people take their faith away from them? No, they couldn't. And even when they killed them, did they lose their faith? No. They went with that iman. So this iman is a treasure. It's something that people cannot snatch from you. 
So وَمَا كَانَ لَنَا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ بَلْ رَادَرْ كُنْتُمْ You were قَوْمًا A people طَاغِينَ Ones who transgress Meaning you yourselves were a transgressing people Just like we were So don't blame us فَحَقَّ So it will come into effect Or فَحَقَّ So it has come into effect عَلَيْنَا Against us قَوْلُ رَبِّنَا The word of our Lord And what word is this? The word of punishment Meaning it is hereby justified And what is this? لَأَمْلَأَنَّ جَهَنَّمَ مِنْكَ وَمِمَّنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنْهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ إِنَّا لَذَائِقُونَ Indeed we لَذَائِقُونَ Surely ones to taste Taste what? The punishment Meaning there is no escape now ذَائِقُونَ is a plural of ذَائِق One who tastes فَحَقَّ عَلَيْنَا قَوْلُ رَبِّنَا إِنَّا لَذَائِقُونَ فَأَغْوَيْنَاكُمْ They would say, and we led you astray. So we led you astray because إِنَّا كُنَّا Indeed we ourselves were غَاوِينَ Ones who were astray. We deviated you because we ourselves were deviated. We misled you because we ourselves were misled. Allah says, فَإِنَّهُمْ So indeed they, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ That day, فِي الْعَذَابِ In the punishment, مُشْتَرِكُونَ Ones who share. مُشْتَرِكُونَ شِينُ الْعَكَافِ اِشْتِرَاقِ Is to share something with someone. To be together in something. So فِي الْعَذَابِ مُشْتَرِكُونَ They will share the punishment. Why? Because they share the crime. They're equal in crime. They cannot blame each other. The leaders, yes, they tried to pressurize, but the followers chose to follow them. Inna, indeed we, kadalika, likewise, naf'alu bil mujrimin, we do with the criminals. Meaning, this is how we deal with the criminals. Meaning, both the leaders and the followers are punished. Each is held accountable for what he did. Inna hum, what was their jurm? What was their crime? Allah describes it. That innahum, indeed they, kanu they used to, idha when, qila lahum, it was said to them, la ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. What was their reaction? Yastakbirun. They used to be very arrogant. Yastakbirun. Istikbar. Istislam. Very arrogant. Extremely arrogant, meaning they didn't even want to hear La ilaha illallah. They didn't even like the statement La ilaha illallah. It made them so angry, so angry, that they got even more vengeful. And we see, for instance, every time Bilal radiallahu anhu would just say Ahad, what would the mushrikeen do? They would torture him even more. And the story of Bilal radiallahu anhu really is a proof that people don't have control over us. Right? Because they owned him. Isn't it? They owned him. He was their slave. But in his heart, how was he? Free. He could believe in whatever he wanted. And they couldn't make him give up his belief. Even with that physical abuse. They couldn't get him to abandon his faith. So, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَسْتَقْفِرُونَ They were so arrogant, they didn't want to accept لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَيَقُولُونَ And they would say, A what? إِنَّا indeed we لَتَارِكُونَ Surely ones who leave آلِهَتِنَا Our gods لِشَاعِرٍ مَجْنُونَ For a mad poet? Meaning, why should we? Notice a'inna, a lot of istifham, a lot of questions are coming in the surah. A'inna, this question, it's basically a rhetorical question. Shall we leave our gods because of a mad poet? Meaning, why should we? Never will we. We won't do that. And this is their arrogance. Tariku is a plural of the word tarik, not tariq. Okay? The name is tariq. This is Tariq. So be careful when you call somebody Tariq. Call them Tariq and not, not Tariq. Because Tariq is one who leaves, one who abandons. Okay? So, they said, shall we leave Alihatina? Alihatina, plural of the word? 
ilah ilah singular aliha plural why should we leave our gods for sha'ir majnoon sha'ir who is sha'ir poet and majnoon from the root letters jim noon noon janna janna to cover majnoon one whose mind has been covered in other words someone who has gone mad all right or affected by the jinn possessed so why should we leave our gods for a crazy poet as if they're saying that what he says may be eloquent but it's all madness we're not going to listen to him and who are they referring to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the deniers of every era said this to their prophets sha'ir majnoon in surah fussilat ayah 43 we learn ma yuqalu laka illa ma qad qila lir rusuli min qablik basically nothing new is being said to you any label that is given to you was a label that was given to a previous prophet also allah says bal rather ja'a bil haqq he came with the truth meaning muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought the truth wa saddaqa and he confirmed who al mursalin the messengers meaning the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam confirmed the previous messengers saddaq al mursalin right he confirmed the previous messengers meaning he is one of the messengers inna kalamina mursalin so and all the messengers brought the same message and the quran completes and finalizes the message that was sent before it innakum it shall be said indeed you ladaiqu surely ones who taste al adhab al alim the painful punishment why because you rejected the message of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and by rejecting him indeed you rejected all of the messengers so you shall have a painful punishment wama and not to juzauna you are recompensed illa except ma kuntum ta'malun that which you used to do meaning this punishment is a recompense for the deeds that you performed yourselves because allah is not unjust to anyone in surah fussilat ayah 46 allah says wa ma rabbuka bi dhallamin lil abid and your lord is not at all unjust to the servants so wa ma tujzawna illa ma kuntum ta'malun illa except ibad allah the servants of allah which servants of allah al mukhlasin the chosen ones meaning they shall not be punished for them is something else and who are they they are mukhlasin mukhlasin is the plural of the word mukhlas and who is mukhlas one who has been chosen one who has been selected so the majority of the people masses they are upon the path of misguidance arrogant towards la ilaha illallah but there are some servants who are chosen selected by allah for what for janna does it happen at random no It's because these servants made themselves sincere because the word mukhlasin is also read as mukhlisin and mukhlis is one who is sincere so because of their sincerity and what is that sincerity la ilaha illallah they shall be chosen meaning they shall be saved saved from the punishment admitted into reward and mukhlas is one who is chosen literally linguistically the word mukhlas is from kha lam sad right and ikhlas is to render something pure meaning to remove all impurity from it so that it is left unblemished unmixed completely pure original this is ikhlas and mukhlas is one who has been made pure one who has been purified all right purified in the sense that every blemish filth you know dirt that's inside it it's taken out so it's left pure and then mukhlas also gives the meaning of one who has been chosen because he has been selected from a whole group all right so because of the purity it has been chosen so mukhlasin those who have been made pure such people will enter jannah such people will be saved from punishment what does it mean by this those who have been made pure 
Do our intentions get corrupted? Yes. What about our heart? That's corrupted, right? The love, fear of the creation. Isn't it? Whether it is family or it is culture or it is the elders or the society, whatever it may be, the heart gets corrupted. So mukhlasin are those who have been made pure, meaning the love of creation is taken away. And sincerity is for Allah only in that heart. So these are mukhlasin. And this happens, this process of purification happens how? Through difficulties, through trials. So, إِلَّا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Such people are chosen, selected for Jannah. Those who have been prepared for Jannah. Prepared through hardship. Like Bilal radiallahu anhu went through hardship. Exactly. I mean, fitna is what? The cleaning off a precious metal, like gold. And that is done how? By heating it, by exposing it to hardship. And that is how all the filth, it comes out. This is the process of purification and selection. So it's the servants who have been made pure, freed of impurities, which impurities of hypocrisy, of riya, of loving other than Allah, fearing other than Allah, those whose hearts have been purified, such will be chosen, selected for Jannah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He admits into His mercy whom He wants. No one can say, I want to go to Jannah. You understand? No one can say on the Day of Judgment, Oh Allah, I've got all of these good deeds, where's my pass? No. Allah will allow, Allah will select, Allah will choose. Who is it that's pure, pure enough, good enough to be admitted into Jannah? And we need to think, what am I doing in order to get selected by Allah? What am I doing in order to be selected for a place in Jannah? Illa ibad Allahil mukhlasin. And for such servants, Allah says, Ulaika, those lahum for them is rizqun, a provision that is ma'loom. Known, well known. For the sincere, chosen, selected, purified servant of Allah is a provision, meaning a reward that is known. Known, meaning its beauty, its perfection is well known. In the Quran, there's so many descriptions we learn about the risk that the people of Jannah will be given, of the different types. How its ladha will be, how its deliciousness will be, the fact that it is eternal, that it's never ending. So its traits are ma'loom, known. Secondly, ma'loom also means that it's known that it is eternal. Okay? In Surah Maryam ayah 62 we learn, وَلَهُمْ رِزْقُهُمْ فِيهَا بُكْرَةً وَعَشِيَّةً Morning and evening, meaning all the time. Qatada, he said that rizqum ma'loom means jannah. For them is rizqum ma'loom, it's well known that they shall have jannah. And some have said that rizqum ma'loom means ma'loom as a known to Allah only. Known to Allah only. It's a surprise for those servants. Fawaki. But one thing is mentioned here. What is that rizqum ma'loom? It is fawaki. Fawakih, plural of the word fakiha. And we learned about the word fakiha, it's fruit that is eaten for the purpose of, for the purpose of pleasure. So fawakih, what is eaten for delight, meaning pure deliciousness. Wahum and they, mukramun, they shall be honored. Mukramun, plural of mukram. One who has been treated with karam, one who has been given karam, treated very respectfully, like a guest. Fawakih, wahum mukramun, they shall have in it all deliciousness, anything they want to eat for delight, pure enjoyment, and they shall be honored. Fi jannatin na'im, in gardens of delight, in gardens of pleasure. Ala upon, meaning they shall be sitting upon sururin, thrones, couches, mutaqabilin, ones facing each other. Surur, plural of the word sarir, seen ra ra. Alright, and surur is also used for pleasure. Right? So sarir is a place where you sit for the purpose of comfort and pleasure. 
And that's, of course, not a hard ground, right? Like the one that you're sitting on right now. Even if it's carpeted, it gets uncomfortable after some time, right? So sort of luxury, comfort, all in one. Mutaqabilin. And the best is, they'll be facing each other. Mutaqabilin, plural of mutaqabil. From the word taqabil, which is to face each other. Because qabil is before, right? So people will be before each other, meaning facing each other. Why facing each other? When can people face each other? When can we look at someone? Look at them in the eye. Look at their face. When? When we feel awkward with them, comfortable with them. Right? Because there was no fight, there was no argument, nobody's mad at you, you're not mad at anyone, you're not hurt, they're not hurt from you, there's no misunderstanding. Right? And also, mutaqabilin, no one will feel left out. There will be no enmity. Whatever hard feelings they had in the world will be taken away before they're admitted into Jannah. Notice over here, this is the exact opposite of the people of hell. The how the people of hell, when together they're being taken to hell, it will be said, وَقِفُوهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ مَسْؤُولُونَ What's wrong with you? How come you're not helping each other? And then they will turn against each other. So whatever little affection they had for each other will all be finished before they're admitted into hell. And the people of Jannah, whatever little enmity, you know, bias, any bad feeling they had for each other will be pulled out before they're admitted into Jannah. So in Jannah, clean hearts. In hellfire, hearts full of hate. So, عَلَى سُرُرٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ يُطَافُ And as you're sitting, facing each other, يُطَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ طَوَافَ طَوَافَ What does طواف mean? To go in circles. So you tafu, it will be circulated alayhim, on them, meaning among them. So in other words, it will be taken around them in circles. What will be taken around them, for them, in order to serve them? Bika'sin. A cup. Which cup? Mimma'een. From a flowing spring. Now the word ka's, you wonder, why would cups be taken to them? Because the word ka's, kaf hamza seen, is used for a cup that is full of mashroob, of a drink. Okay? And qadh is used for a cup that may be empty, but ka's is full, brimming. Alright? This is ka's. So, yutafu alayhim bi ka's. In other words, they will be served ka's. They will be served how? Around. Not that in the middle. Somebody is in the middle serving them so that they're interrupting. You understand? Like for example, if you're watching TV and somebody comes in front of you and serves you some food, you're like, yeah, thanks. But can you move to the side, please? Right? Because you're blocking my view. Right? Or you are sitting somewhere, facing somebody, talking to them. Somebody else comes in the middle to serve you or to serve them. And they're kind of blocking your view. They're interrupting your conversation. So nothing like that will happen. Yutafu alayhim, it will be taken how? Around them. Because people will be facing each other, so they will be served as if from behind. Okay? So yutafu alayhim bika'sin. With cups full of drinks, and these drinks, where are they from? Mim ma'in, from a flowing spring. Ma'in, mim ainun, we have done this word earlier. Running spring. And why is the source mentioned over here? Running spring. Meaning from an endless supply. A fountain of endless supply. And what kind of a drink is this? In Surah Insan, Ayah 21, Allah says, وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا tahura. Their Lord will give them a drink that is tahur, Very, very clean. Extremely pure. And further, this drink is described bayda, extremely white, lazzatin, delicious. For who? Lisharibin, for those who drink. Meaning it's only those who drink that delicious drink who will know, who will experience its taste. Bayda, from the root letters, baya, bad. And bayda is the feminine of the word abyad. What does abyad mean? Very white, crystal white. So the drink will be glistening, bright, clean color, right? Clean, white, and lazah, 
Ladha from the root letter is lam, dal, dal. Ladhi is that which is found delicious and pleasing. So this drink will be beautiful in its color and on top of that, delicious in its taste. In contrast to the drinks of this world, which may be beautiful in their color but horrible in their taste. Or the other way around. Or maybe both. Horrible in color and horrible in taste. Right? Or maybe they are good in color and good in taste, but I mean, it could have been better. Right? So, in Jannah, it's لَذَّةٍ للشاربين. Its taste will be as good as its color. And especially, I mean, if you think about it, out of all drinks, which drink is considered to be the best or a symbol of luxury? It's wine. Right? And wine in this world, how is it? You have to acquire that taste. I mean, that's what I've heard. I've never experienced it, alhamdulillah. But that's what I've heard. It's an acquired taste. Allahu Adam, Right? That it's not delicious at first sip. Okay? Think of it this way. When you have pop, for example, children, what happens the first few times they have a sip of Pepsi or Sprite? Do they make a funny face? Yes. They cannot drink. I remember the first time I saw one child, he was drinking Sprite for the first time ever. Okay, And he was drinking it just because all the kids were drinking it. And the poor child was sitting with the can in his hand, you know, wanting to throw it away, but he didn't want to throw it away because it's cool to drink it. And at the same time, it was too spicy for him. It was as if he was forcing himself to drink it. In Jannah, there is no problem like that because the drink itself is ladha. It has no taste and it and, and it has no color. Whereas my mind has is delicious. It's white and it will never run out. So it's the complete opposite. Yes, but in dunya, for example, water doesn't really have a taste, right? If you're thirsty, you enjoy the taste of it. It runs out, right? But in jannah, we see that the drink, whatever that drink is, it's delicious in its taste, its color, endless supply. Bayubaa ladhatil lisharibin. One more thing is that the drinks will be brought to them. Right? They will be served. Is there a difference between being served a drink and having to go with your cup and fill it with something? The mothers know it, right? I mean, it's such a good experience when somebody brings your tea for you. Right? And somebody's actually capable of making your tea the way you like it. Yes. Over here. Yeah. When I have to work over here, I don't have maids, you know, but you know, Betty, you know, something different. Yes. You know when you go, for example, to Morton's and you're ordering your coffee, okay, or your tea, then you have to wait in line first of all, right? And then you finally place the order. And then maybe you forget something. Maybe you buy, out of mistake, you order the wrong size. And then when you get your drink, after you've driven away, you find out that it's the wrong drink they've given you. Or they forgot to mix it. Right? So it's bitter at the top and by the time you reach the bottom, it's so sweet, it's difficult to drink. These things happen, right? But just placing that order itself, it bothers you sometimes. It's work. It requires work. In Jannah, how does it work? In a hadith in Sahih At-Targhib At-Targhib, we learn that in Jannah, a person will wish for wine. So the pouring vessel will come in his hand and he will drink it. And then the vessel will go away. He will wish, and that's it. He will just wish. And the cup will come in his hand. He will drink it, and that's it. He doesn't even have to put it away. It will go away itself. So in Jannah, you wish, and then you just forget about it. There's no need to place an order, to explain the order, to wait for the order, to ensure that it's the right one. No such hassle. And then, لا فيها غول لا not فيها in it. Meaning in that drink, there is no غول. What is غول? غول غين واو لام. غول is the bad effect of something. Okay? The word غيلة غيلة is used for a witch. Witch or a sorcerer, magician. Or a jinn that comes in different faces. Okay? Meaning a jinn that comes in a form so that a person can see it. 
And from this, the word ghawl is used for the state in which a person is deprived of reason and intellectual faculties, meaning his brain is not really working properly. He's confused. And that's what happens when a person is affected by magic. Or when jinn are bothering a person, he's not sure. Did I see something here? Or did I not see something here? Do you see what I see? Am I the only one who sees this? What's going on? He's confused. Right? So this is ghawl. Ghawl is the bad effect of something. Alright? So there's no bad effect of that drink, meaning once they have that لَذَّةِ الْشَارِبِينَ This sharab, this beautiful drink that is bayda, there's no bad effect of it. What are the bad effects of drinking? Not even just wine, but anything. What are the bad effects? If you have a lot of coffee, a lot of tea, does it dehydrate you? It does. Right? What else happens? Hmm? Okay, heartburn for instance. Okay, lack of sleep. Washroom. And you're irritable, maybe a headache. Huh? Addiction. Hyperness. Yes. Ruins your teeth. Yeah, for those who are diabetic, high blood pressure, or a problem like that. You know when you have a uh, pop, for example, burps, they just don't go away for some people. I mean, that's also a bad effect. It's something small, but it bothers people. For people who drink alcohol, right? then what happens? Vomiting, intoxication, headache, faintness, maybe stomach problems, losing one's mind. These are all غول لا فيها غولون notice the word غولون any غول big or small no bad effect whatsoever no problem no hardship caused by drinking or over drinking in Jannah ولا النور هم they عنها from it meaning because of that drink they will not be ينزفون ينزفون ones who shall be intoxicated ينزفون is from نون زائفة and نزف is literally means to drain means to drain, to exhaust something out gradually. نَزَفَ الْمَاءَ البئرة. Right, The bir, the well, from it the water was taken out gradually, gradually until the well was dry. Okay, And also it is said نُزِفَ دَمْعُهُ meaning his tears were exhausted. He ran out of his tears. No more tears were coming out. He cried so much, or rather she cried so much that no more tears were coming anymore. So, وَلَا هُمْ عَنْهَا يُنزَفُونَ What does it mean? They will not lose their mind gradually. Because that's what happens, right? Initially a person is a little bit sane and then gradually, gradually over time they're not even able to stand straight. Right? So, وَلَا هُمْ عَنْهَا يُنزَفُونَ 